I'm Stefan Bauman, and thanks again. Can you believe it? This is the Bauman Effect number 20. We're just moving along, and today we have an extra added bonus. We are going to be discussing rocks, how to paint them. One of the hardest things that artists have uh, in their repertoire of painting is painting rocks because they all look like potatoes. But this time we will discover the secret on how not to paint potatoes but paint awesome rocks and stay tuned towards the end because i give a little secret that i was holding out for the patreon group but i'm going to reveal it here on how to actually work on top of your paintings without ruining what's underneath so stay tuned for that so sit back and relax and finally to figure out what it is that makes rocks look three-dimensional and how to paint them so you don't end up with a whole bunch of potatoes. Enjoy. Uh, I'm Stefan Bauman. I'd like to welcome you to an hour of discussions and talk about uh, painting and the trials and tribulations of painting on location. For most of you, well, rocks are kind of challenging. When we, when we think of rocks, we think that most of us have like potatoes. And they go, how do you make your rocks not look a, like a potato? And I'm gonna try to uh, explain some of that and then show you kind of some of my secrets for rocks and things like that. But let me show you the secret to making really great rocks. So, first thing, I'm gonna take uh, some brown asphaltum and I'm gonna start off my rock. Now, the problem with people and their rocks is that they tend to look at the, the outside or the contour of the rock. So when we see a rock, it's usually like, you know, like, you see a circle like that. For most people, they kind of look like potatoes like this, okay? Let me do that a little bit darker so that you can see that. Okay, let's go. Of course, when you do demos like this, you kind of have to <laughs> do it large so you guys can see it. But let's just say that's, that's usually your, your kind of your shape. Looks like a big potato, okay? So one of the keys is that you kind of have to think that the rock is three-dimensional. When we just have the outline and we just kind of go in and we start highlighting the top of the rock and shadowing the bottom part, of course it's going to look like a potato, you know, the highlight. And the thing is you're concentrating on the light uh, along the edge because that's where the light's coming from. And let's just say the light is coming from this direction, okay? So the secret behind doing rocks is to find the side closest to you closest to you. So that's like this edge here. And what I always tell people, it's like it's a three-dimensional object, it's like a Christmas gift. And it's kind of like a Christmas gift that you can stomp on one side to make it a little bit cock -eyed. So we want to start off with the shape of a box. To get the real feeling that it's three-dimensional. You know, these see-through boxes. Here's the back of the box. Here's the next part of the box, square. See that square? You kind of have to think about making boxes like that, kind of square. And what you want to do is think that the front of the box, the closest part of your box, is going to have the light hitting it. So the lightest part of the rock is going to be the side closest to you. And it's also going to be the top of the rock. So if the light is hitting that, that box that I just showed you, the top part of the box is going to have light on it. The side closest to you will have the most light. The back part of the box will have the darkest part of the box. So, by bringing the light towards the front of the rock, you actually start making the rock three-dimensional. It's not just like this, but it's three-dimensional. It comes out at you. So, that would be the lightest part of the, the box here. Now, the light's coming this way. We would lighten this side here. This side here would be darker than the top side. So we quickly just kind of get a darker side on this. I know he's absolutely gone crazy. So anyway, so here we have a darker side because it's still pointed 
to the side that the light's coming from, but this side here would be darker. But again, the lighter part of that would be in the front. And then the third side of the rock would be darker. And we can cut this into four sides, five sides, six sides. So this would be the darkest part of the rock here. So what we're actually doing is that we're doing a box, three-dimensional, 3D, almost looks like a big brick. But the key to it is not to put the light along the back of it. Does it look like a potato now? No, it looks like a box. Oh great, Stephanie, you got my, my rocks from looking like potatoes to, ro to, to boxes. But let me just show you here. So, what we're going to do is we're going to smash the box a little to give it a little different angle. We're going to try to change the form a little. Always remembering keeping the side closest to us lit more. And this is just a over-dramatized uh, example. But you can see by pushing the angles out, you can see it starts to like look more like a rock. We can go up higher here, curve that some. But the whole idea is to keep in mind that this box is a three-dimensional object. This rock is a three-dimensional object that, and we can, right here, you can see I'm going to even put a crag in here. Sometimes our mistakes are our best friends, but see here I'm making the rock a little bit more interesting. Um, I've got a site here. I could take a little bit of here. We can run a crack in there. Put a few cracks in here. See right here? You can put some angles in. It all starts off with a three dimensional object, keeping the object in front of us. even take off the bottom a bit. These are white. You can take the bottom and cut that off here. Anyway, so very basic idea. But the way to keep your rocks three-dimensional is to keep them as... See, that's not a bad rock. Um, and we can go in and we can even, even uh, break this up here lower this here to make it even more of a shape but the key to it is keep the front of the rock lit the back of the light the rock dark keep the highlight off of the back edge and it won't look like a potato one of the things that I do love is I love granite rocks granite rocks rock and so I've got to take white with ultramarine blue and what we want to do is kind of start creating some textures and you know, the, the granite rocks have all this wonderful uh, texture on it. Again, keeping the front of my rock the lightest, always going back to the lightest. I'm going to introduce a little bit of highlight color on that and more white. When you start to use fan brushes, it's like, man, that just sucks up. And this is a um, fan brush that is a uh, black gold. I love them, they're very soft. So we're gonna put in a little bit of highlight up in front here. Lots of texture. Um, the vertical part of the rock isn't gonna get quite as much texture. If the light's coming this way, there's nothing perpendicular to the light source. And that's really kind of crucial. If the light's coming this way and you want to highlight the rock, it being flat like that, you wouldn't be getting a strong light on it. You'd actually probably be getting a stronger light on the vertical on this side here. Because that side kind of is perpendicular to the light source that's coming in. So let's go ahead and just make that a little bit lighter. We just kind of get some of the textures in. What's fun is to go in with some darker textures, ultramarine blue and asphaltum. Um, 
and you can kind of go in and get some of the the neat little formations and some of the cracks that you get in rocks. Now, when we get down to this side of the rock here, it's going to be a little darker. Remember, in the darkest, darkest areas, we don't see detail. We see most of the detail in the transition area. So this is more of a transition area where we actually see the detail. When we get into the dark areas in here, we don't see as much detail. Um, but it does get kind of darker in places. Um, and then, let me show you a little bit about light bouncing. Two. Let's get this some more dark. This is more ultramarine blue. For those of you who are following me, ultramarine blue deep is my new passion. Oh, love ultramarine blue deep. So we're going to take just uh, this is like pure ultramarine blue deep in here. We're just going to darken this up a little bit. Again, not a lot of texture in the shadow areas. Uh, the transitions are uh, crucial when you come to these cracks, bringing in a lot of the, the forms and textures, the little fissures that, that uh, you find on your thing here. I always love making the study of rocks. And like I said, mossy rocks are my favorite, and we'll get to that in a sec. I'm going to go in with just white. Again, really emphasizing the area closest to us to make it three-dimensional. And see, just remember that it all started off with a box. Still a little boxy, but that's all right. Um, I was going to say I could throw in some palette knife work on here, but I don't quite have my knives that handy right now. So we can kind of work that. So there would be a cast shadow. So let's put in a cast shadow of green in here. I'm using um, cobalt blue and cad yellow for a darker green area in here. Kind of a, I'm going to go with a little bit more ultramarine blue in here, kind of get a cast shadow going on. Up and around the base here, we'd have a cast shadow. And then we would have some light. And here what we would use is a, is a highlighted green with white. And let's just put this in here. The whole point of me doing this here is to kind of show you what can happen uh, with rocks when they're on an area surrounded by light. So we got light, we got a cast shadow here. This is the light behind the rock. Let's lighten that up a bit. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Light behind the rock here. Um, and there you have a cast shadow. Thing is, when you have light like this, when light's coming in and hitting the grass like that, lo and behold, you would actually have some of this light bounce back into the shadow color. People forget that uh, light travels, it bounces. And so if it's light here, we're going to get a little bit of reflective light onto the dark color, the green, which kind of plants the, the rock in. So we're taking the highlight color and kind of putting a little bit of that into our rock as our reflection. When the rock comes down to the base here, we want to really darken it. Really darken the base there. So that we can kind of make out where the bottom is for that rock. And it's really an idea of kind of planting that down in there. Get a little bit more. The brown and the ultramarine blue actually create almost a black. like that. All right, and then you're going to have to plant the grass, the, the rock down, by putting in some things. Now, our horizon line, which is always key, our horizon line is up here. 
Okay, so you want to get that. We're looking down on this rock, and it's really important, especially when we start doing rocks that we're looking up at, which is a totally different thing altogether. So now what I do is I mix up uh, my base color. Let me just darken around here. Um, da -da -da. I just want to kind of tone my canvas. I'm going to use a bigger, better brush for that. But the key to painting rocks is start off with a, a box, or think of it as a box, as a three-dimensional shape with the side closest to you as being the, the brightest. Um, we can actually, if we take this and kind of darken the back a bit, you can see as we darken the back, you know, holy smokes, that kind of really is like, wow, that's a really great rock. Um, if I do say so myself. Now, the, the old masters would study this stuff a lot. They would go outdoors and they would paint um, rocks and mushrooms. Uh, if you want to see a lot of great studies, uh, Shishkin did a lot of really beautiful uh, uh, grass and, and trees and rock studies. Uh, Shishkin was a, a Russian artist that um, was really a master when it came to painting forests and a lot of sketches. This I'm doing a little bit of checkering here for those of you who follow me. Oh. The checkering is, is a video that if you're on YouTube, you could check out. It's called um, The Greatest Secret to Painting or Your Money Back. But you don't get your money back because you don't pay for YouTube videos. But anyway, um, but it is checkering is where we highlight the background we highlight the background and uh, darken the foreground and then we switch. So right here, the rock is kind of dark on the edge. So I lighten the background. But now what we could do is we could, light, we could lighten this part of the rock here. And we lighten that part of the rock. And if that part of the rock is light, we're gonna darken the background. So we'll darken the background out here. And you see how, how it goes, how that rock pops once we get that shadow in? See, that's checkering. It's like a checkerboard. So it's dark here on the edge of the rock, and we lighten the background. And that dark goes around the corner, and slowly there's a transition period there that I want to go in and bring the, the highlight down a little further, down to where that dark part starts, and where that dark part starts, the rock gets light. You make some more interesting, and you could do that all the way through here. So this is dark and light. We could lighten up the back a little, but not as much as this, and then uh, darken the background and go on and so forth. But this is not the demo on that. Like I said, if you go to the YouTube video, how to improve your painting or your money back, you'll get more on checkering. But we need to move on because I promised you mossy rocks. So. The key to mossy rocks I have found over the years is that you got to get some dark colors on there. Now this is really thick and this is wet and really big and you know I'm just trying to do this so that you guys can see this on those little tiny screens that you have. But you want to mix a dark color first and here I'm going back in with my ultramarine blue. I'm going to go in with my um, fan brush, my trusty fan brush here, and I'm going to mix up a dark, dark color. And the mossy rocks start with putting in dark. And I'm tapping the side of the brush. If you watch my tree demo, you never use a fan brush straight on like that because you get like eyebrows, okay? You want to use the corner of the brush and you want to dab that in. Dab, dab, dab. Let's put a lot of moss over on this corner here. It's like you almost have to have a dark base for the moss to go on. Did I tell you for my birthday I want a bunch of mossy rocks to show up on my doorstep? My address is on my website. Uh, I'm just kidding. I try 
to entertain people here. Okay. Um, lay in the dark first. Moss has a tendency to want to be on the dark side of the rocks. So we want to put them in kind of in here. It's kind of like all of a sudden the, the, the rock becomes more interesting with all of this moss on it. Base color here. Mm -hmm. Just kind of get into the shadows here. And I'm going to just take a few swipes of my fan brush up. And this is one of, the, one of my favorite things to do with a fan brush. Is to hold the fan brush flat like this and lift up like that against the grain. It makes for very interesting brush strokes. Kind of breaks up the, the grass so it feels very natural. And a lot of people like to pull it up like this, but there's something about laying that brush flat and pushing upwards. You see, it's my, cam my brush is almost flat to the canvas here and we go up. And do some of that in front of the rock here to kind of plant that rock into the ground.